Hey there, and welcome to Cognic, the channel where we talk about brains. As a neuroscientist, I thought today it might be fun to respond and react to some very common myths about the human brain. Let's clear up some misconceptions. Hello Neuronauts, Cogna here. Today we're going to talk about some very common myths about the human brain that a lot of people actually believe. I'm going to react and respond to a few of these myths now and hopefully set the record straight. Also, if you're new to the channel and you like neuroscience, psychology, or just science in general, consider subscribing to the channel and hitting that notification bell. It's free, it helps us out, and it makes my day. If you're aware of any other neuroscience myths or you have a brain fact that you want me to fact check, leave it in the comment section down below. I read all the comments and try to respond, so I will see you there. Without further ado, let's get into the first brain myth. Myth number one, we only use 10% of the brain. This is actually a really popular myth, and it's probably because of movies like Lucy or Limitless, where things are said like, we only use 10% of our brain, we only use 20% of the brain. If we could somehow use the whole 100%, we'd be super powerful beings. So this is actually a completely false statement. We use 100% of our brain, just not all at the same time. If you did use 90 or 100% of your brain at the same time, uh, that would probably be a seizure and you should go to the hospital. Humans use 100% of their brain just at different times. We don't use the whole thing at once because that wouldn't make sense. Think of your brain like a kitchen. If I asked you to make me some toast, you wouldn't turn on the sink, the oven, the toaster, the microwave, and then open both of the fridge doors. Instead, you're going to use the toaster to make the toast. You only use the part that you need for the task that you're doing. Could you theoretically turn on every single appliance in your house at once to make toast? Yes, but why? It would waste energy, you'd blow a fuse, and it wouldn't make sense. The human brain is the same way. It's made up of lots of different regions and networks that do different types of processing. You don't need to use every single part of the brain at the same time. You just use what's necessary for the state you're in and the tasks that you're doing. So to summarize, no, we don't use only 10% of the brain. We use 100%, just not all at the same time, because that wouldn't make sense. Myth number two, REM sleep causes dreams. REM sleep or REM sleep stands for rapid eye movement. And while REM sleep is correlated with dreaming, which means that they usually happen at the same time, as we learned in school, correlation doesn't equal causation. Just because dreaming and REM sleep occur at the same time, it doesn't mean that one causes the other. REM sleep and dreaming have been shown to be double dissociated. Double dissociated is the fancy neuroscience way of saying that patients who can't enter REM sleep can still dream, and patients who can't dream can still enter REM sleep. In other words, we can show medically that one is not required for the other. So yes, REM, or rapid eye movement sleep and dreaming, usually happen at the same time, but one does not cause the other. Myth number three, mental capacity, intelligence, and other qualities of your brain are fixed from birth. This is the idea that when you're born, you have like a certain level of intelligence built into you. You can fall somewhere below that level, but you'll never get past it. You have like a limit of how smart you can be based on the brain you were born with. This statement is actually false. Humans have the ability to extend their knowledge and expand their skills. For example, at memory competitions, which are actually a real thing, people who are professional memorizers will go and they can memorize a whole deck of cards in the order that it's in. They can memorize a whole list of 300 numbers. These people weren't born with superior memorization abilities. They were born like you or I, being able to memorize a small list of numbers. But if you ask these people, they learned techniques to memorize larger lists. You can train your brain to use different techniques of memorization. These people who started off only being able to remember seven numbers can now memorize a whole deck of cards, not because they were born with that ability, but because it was learned. The fact that this is a myth should be motivational because it means that you can expand your skills and your knowledge, and you weren't born with some threshold of uh, you're never going to be smarter than this. That, that would be silly. Myth number four, learning causes new brain cells to grow. The human brain grows a lot in the first years of life, and it continues to grow up until your mid-20s. After your mid-20s, around the age of 25, your brain stops developing new neurons in meaningful numbers. In other words, as an adult, you're not going to be growing significant amounts of neurons, but you can still learn when you're older. Learning doesn't stop when your brain stops growing. That wouldn't make sense. I can see how some people might think that when you learn new things, your brain grows new neurons to store that information in, 
but that's not how it works. Learning actually occurs through a process called LTP, or long-term potentiation. Long-term potentiation might sound complicated, but it's actually not. Think of it this way. Let's say that you're learning how to play a new song on the piano, and you have to play note one, and then note two, and then note three. So when you play note one, group one of neurons fires to make you play note one. And when you want to play note two, group two of neurons fires to make you play note two. The same occurs for note three. Group three of neurons will fire to make you play note three. When you start learning the song, it's pretty clunky. You have to look at the keys. You have to think about what you're doing. Note one, note two, note three. Okay, let me practice again. Note one, note two, note three. Eventually, it starts to get easier. This is because if you keep firing group one of neurons, then group two, then group three in that order, your brain will start to connect them. We have a saying in neuroscience that neurons that fire together, wire together. Because group one fires and then group two and then group three, in that order, your brain starts to realize that this should now be a pathway. Eventually, after you practice enough, you can play the song one, two, three with your eyes closed, one hand behind your back, and you don't really have to think about what you're doing. This is because once you say, I'm gonna play the song and you play note one, the rest of the song sort of flows from that first note. It's because you've created a pathway for that song. This is how long-term potentiation works. If you fire similar groups of neurons in a certain order, they're gonna learn to wire together. So no, when you learn new things, you don't grow new neurons to store that information. What's really happening is that you're taking neurons that you already have and you're just connecting them up in new and interesting ways. Myth number five, the right brain is the creative side and the left brain is the rational side. This is a very popular myth. You'll hear people say, I'm very right brained or you're very left brained, but there's no truth to that. See, concepts like creativity are so complex that they require a whole bunch of different brain regions on both sides of the brain. Consider the idea that the right side of the brain is the creative side. Would you consider a poet or an author to be creative? Authors and poets need to use language in their creative art, and language is processed on the left side of the brain in the parasylvian language area. While that's just one example, creativity is a distributed concept. In other words, it's not just in one part of the brain. There isn't the creative area of the brain. Creativity requires a bunch of different areas on both sides of the brain to function. The same is true for left-brained people. There are areas on the right side of the brain that are very important for logic and reasoning. So no, it's not true to say that there are right-brained people and left-brained people and that the right side is creative while the left side is logical. That's just not true. Many parts of the brain on both sides are important for creativity, logic, and reasoning. Myth number six, listening to classical music will make your baby smarter. This is a very popular myth, sometimes called the Mozart effect. The idea is that if you have classical music playing for your baby, that they'll eventually grow up to be smarter, maybe than children who didn't listen to classical music. There's little to no evidence supporting this myth, and honestly, I think it comes from the idea that classical music is somehow inherently sophisticated. Listening to classical music isn't bad for your baby, but it's not gonna make them a Nobel Prize winner either. Luckily for all the parents out there, there are ways that you can help your baby to potentially have a healthier brain and a higher IQ later. The first way to assure a healthy brain is through a healthy diet full of vitamins and omega-3 fatty acids. Omega-3 fatty acids are especially important for your neuron so that they can become myelinated. The long part of a neuron called the axon is covered in something called the myelin sheath. Myelin is a fatty substance that's extremely important for neuron health and for the conducting of signals. Definitely ask your doctor about healthy ways you can eat to promote brain health. The other way you can help your baby grow up to potentially have a higher IQ and a more developed brain is through many different modes of enrichment. I'm talking toys, puzzles, different types of arts and crafts. The more types of enrichment that your baby has, the better. Giving your baby different types of enrichment allows them to practice different types of skills like fine motor skills, gross motor skills, and cognitive skills. Also, reading to and talking to your baby can help them to develop language skills and social skills. Classical music is very nice though, so why not throw some on in the background while you do all the other stuff? It couldn't hurt. That's it for this video, but if you're still here all the way at the end and you learned something new, consider subscribing to the channel and hitting that notification bell. It helps me grow the channel and it means a lot. Like I said before, if you know of any other neuroscience myths or you have a brain fact that you want me to fact check, please leave it in the comment section down below. So maybe I'll make another video just like this one. Take care of your brains and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace guys.